Well, everybody, Valve has taken a policy position with the Steam platform. It's one that uh, I think to certain parts of the audience, people are going to be very pro because NFTs have certainly rubbed a bunch of people the wrong way. Uh, but to other people who are very much uh, you know pro all of that, they'll be a little bit disappointed. And that is when Tim Sweeney swoops in and uh, has a little bit more for us to discuss. But yes, Steam, NFTs, blockchain, let's have a chat about it. So as for what's happening here, Valve have officially banned all blockchain-related games from Steam. Uh, Valve's official rules on what can and cannot be distributed on Steam have been updated to include the mention of apps built using blockchain technology. Now, for a lot of this, people are just going to tie it into, like, NFTs and stuff. There is obviously so much more to blockchain, and there are many very interesting and compelling uses of blockchain within gaming. I would imagine for Valve, they would maybe have some policing concerns over what just putting more blockchain functionality onto what is deployed through their store, what that could potentially bring. Um, because, you know, with, with blockchain stuff, with crypto, it's not just like buying some Bitcoin, now you own some Bitcoin. Um, a lot of these uh, actually have quite a lot of functionality in them and quite a lot going on more than just... Um, how people would maybe see it as just purely a speculative asset. So there is that to think about as well. There could potentially be, and I don't profess to fully know, but there could be a big old can of worms. Um, now there are some interesting things. I've mm. seen some NFT platforms that, you know, one of them, it was basically like horse racing, but it was using a whole bunch of generated stuff, uh, or sort of generative stuff with the tokens and like evolution and all of that, and basically all this, you know, c collecting the, the horses, and it was all tied back, you know, into a token with a value, and it, it seemed interesting to me. I mean, there was also a bit of just like, okay, cool, but what's what's the point? Um, Modern Neopets? <laughs> yeah, but I guess with a few extra things that uh, can be enabled via blockchain. Um, but basically, yes, look, Valve have came out with a big no here. As for NFTs, NFTs, uh, non-fungible uh, tokens, have been a controversial thing since they really popped up onto the scene. Um, they're also, uh, I mean, just interesting. A lot of people, especially in the art and I think game side, are so much more aware of uh, of crypto, uh, you know, blockchain, um, now than they were in the past. So, yeah, like an NFT, it is a in a way a completely non-tangible asset right like it's basically just you 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 own the unique token um and that of course is in the case of nfts at least of, as we've seen it being a part of like an emerging nft art market um there's a fun thing to talk about with right clickers soon <laughs> which i thought to be funny now the problem then is uh nfts being linked to scams that's one thing and that's not really the fault of nfts it's purely just like with the the ico um initial coin offering uh, bubble where when there's a lot of genuine work going on and a lot of genuine growth in a sector, you are going to see people just come in and run scams. And it could just be for Valve that they don't want to be anywhere near any of that shit and they couldn't be bothered because they probably couldn't make an easy automated solution for that. It would probably be a legal and manpower-based solution to any drama that could arise. High chance they don't want that in their platform because the whole thing with Steve... Or with Steve? Who's he? The whole thing with Steam is... You set it up, you build the systems right, you create the right policies, and it runs itself. That's always been their way with Steam, as far as I can tell. Yeah, which I will we'll, we'll get into it a little bit, but I find it's interesting that Epic are uh, you know taking the other side of this affair because Tim Sweeney completely agrees that it's a market rife of scams. Completely yeah. agrees. Um, there's then the other side of it too, where um, the environmental concerns, where basically. Um, well, minting is pretty expensive in terms of uh, computer resources. Um, now, this will like depend. This will vary from like you know token to token. Right? I don't profess to exactly know everything, but as an example, like um, you know, Bitcoin is like pretty expensive right now in terms of like the you know like the cost of mining and all of that. Uh, it's more expensive now than it would have been in the past. There's the stuff with like the difficulty increasing over time. Um, but like there's you know there's like newer protocol uh, protocols. Um, that are more, you know, energy efficient and stuff like that. So it very much is an emerging sector and there's very valid concerns there. There's also a lot of just painting with a broad brush. So, you know, t take it for what it is, I suppose. Um, there's other things that are just plain weird, um, like, you know, stories of people selling old memes for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, Zoe Roth sold uh, Disaster Girl, uh, the meme, as an NFT for $500,000. 
and there's a lot going on with NFTs that is just kind of wild to me. And the one thing that I think those who are outside the NFT space say is, you're just buying a special JPEG. Now it's not literally that. It's you know supposed to be that the the token is uh, it's you know this unique non fungible token. Um, you know that is it, it, it is this art. You kind of you know you can't separate them. It, it really means that you are like the true owner of this thing. But there's a reason why they derog you know they derogatorily call people right clickers because it's right click save as oh. Now the image is mine. <laughs> yep, it is. It is insane that that's literally what's happened. There are people who are going and buying like profile pictures, like NFTs for use on Twitter that are, you know, let's say objectively maybe not the best pixel art we've ever seen. No, uh, in general, there is so <laughs> much. Like, sorry, there is so much pure shite shovelware going on in the NFT space. Um, I I feel that because it's NFTs and it's a new rising thing, um, you can just do some pixely maybe slightly ethereal vapor wavy shit and people will just lap it up honestly from what i've seen it doesn't even need to be anything interesting or good it could be like eight pixels vaguely in the shape of a face that looks like the person if you're lucky and they will put thousands on this and then they'll get mad when people just go oh yeah see your nft yeah save the copy here's a screenshot of my hard drive there's four copies of it does this mean i have four times the amount of money you have and they're actually getting upset by it. Like, they've, yeah. they have started using right clicker as a, per, as a pejorative. Now, one it's thing so that I would just say to, to explain things to people mm. is, uh, you know, how much is a Picasso worth? Really? How much is a Picasso worth? How the, how the hell do you judge that? Well, one way of judging that is how much other Picassos go for. And if you are a collector of Picassos, you have a vested interest in Picassos not going for cheap as does every single other collector of Picassos, which means that you have got an incentive to keep doing things with, you know, the minimum reserve prices and all of that, such that the price of the artwork being sold goes up and up and up and up. Because, yeah, you're collecting Picassos, but also they're storing value for you and they're a speculative asset and all of those other things. And I would say that some similar things that lead to a lot of inflation in the like the big traditional art market i think those things are applying to nfts what is the intrinsic value of disaster girl is it really 500 grand when you can just right click it but by everybody just being like these this is super serious this is the next form of art collection this is the future look at all of these super high values well the people who are going to be pushing all of those super high values have also got nft portfolios and, you know, more vested interests there. So there's going to be aspects of what drives up the traditional art market that will be on display here. And I think that stuff that to a bunch of people, like it comes across as a bit weird and funny because of just right click, save as. Um, and that's maybe just the financial angle is what maybe makes some people feel a bit iffy about it. Now, what about NFTs in video games? Because that's how they're going to end up in Steam. Obviously not anymore. Well, NFTs are relatively new, um, but then being tied to gaming does amplify a few worries for some people. Now, Age of Rust is a blockchain game containing puzzles that sometimes may reward you with an NFT, right? So in a way, you could say that as a player, it's like not only am I just getting a generic JPEG as a reward, but this JPEG is an NFT. This is my NFT. Nobody else is going to have it maybe it has some form of value. You know, like what if uh, like a game like that takes off and you have all of this generative stuff going on, you get the really cool thing. It is pretty much ensured to be unique. You have the NFT, uh, you know, yourself. Well, will that make it go up in value? You know, in the way that like, imagine you have got a, you know, a shiny Charizard, but like imagine a super, super, super mega shiny Charizard that's completely unique that is deployed via an NFT. You can sort of see how this could create markets within games and just a lot of interesting stuff there. Yeah, especially when you take into uh, consideration the metaverse that everyone's trying to go into Bingo. that keeps loads of different games and has everything. It's the kind of thing where until the, the functionality exists, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who it was, I think it was, might have been Daniel Ahmad was tweeting something about, you know, the idea of you have, there is a literally unique weapon, unique sword as an example in one game and you can use it in another because that's your property as an NFT. Yeah. But until the functionality is there and proven, and considering how game developers generally uh, interact with one another on stuff like that, 
seems unlikely, but then you get into the concept of metaverses and so many games in the same metaverse, etc., etc., and you go, maybe that's a possibility, but as to whether it's good or healthy or not, uh, I could yeah. tell you. Uh, yeah, this game is obviously being forced off Steam with Valve's yeah. uh, latest policy change. So yes, community, as of a few minutes ago, we were notified that Steam is kicking all blockchain games off, including Age of Rust, because NFTs have value. Behind the scenes, we had good communications and have been upfront with Steam. We choose to be upfront about blockchain gaming and NFTs. As a result, we finally lost the battle with Steam. While I'm disappointed for Age of Rust being removed, the point is more to the fact that blockchain games as a whole are being removed. This is a setback for all. Steam's point of view is that items have value and they don't allow items that can have real world value on their platform. While I respect their choice, I fundamentally believe that NFTs and blockchain games are the future. It's why I started this uh, started this journey with all of you. At this point, we will put our energy back into game dev, creating more NFTs and empowering the community than trying to fight Steam alone. We'll continue to publish our Unity game elsewhere. Moving forward, we love NFTs, we love Engine, and we love our community onward. Now, as for this with Valve, do you remember something about Knives? <laughs> knives, knives that came out of boxes in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which, funny enough, uh, did result in a global offensive against uh, the various different uh, lottos, like, you know, CSGO lotto, and, of course, Valve, who were basically... They were being accused of just sitting there letting a gray market gambling thing run on their platform. They obviously don't want that because think of all of the cans of worms that that exposed Valve to. So I think they would be worried that if a new gold rush sort of went and happened on their platform, that similar to with the CSGO Lotto situation, they would just have a whole bunch of shit to deal with that they probably couldn't be bothered to because why bother with all that shit when you can just sit there and collect 20 or 30 to 20% um, of the you know revenue of everything sold in your store? <laughs> why, like seriously, like why, why would you want to invite all of that upon yourself? I, I really think that is... Uh, that is what Valve is, is thinking here. Yeah. And it's interesting because this is really the, this is the next evolution of games that have things in them with real value. We saw this with Second Life. Uh, there's another one, it's called, is it Neo or something? I forget the name. It's, uh, it's another one of those games with a few, it's got a few planets um, and stuff is all based on, you know, real money. Um, there's also, I, I remember a few like, I think they were like skill shooters, but they actually had a real money element for ammunition or something. I forget the name of it. Um, so, you know, for a lot of people, you know, as, as a player, you'd be like, okay, cool. So I can play this game and instead of just getting some Steam cards and some achievement points, I can get things that have an actual value within an actual metaverse. Like, to, to be real here, we can all see how that would be a super appealing thing to some people. As an example, there are some people who looked at Diablo 3 with its auction house and they thought, cool, so I'm going to make some money in the side then. That was, in fact, my first thought when I saw that as a kid. I thought, oh, cool. Could I do well enough at this to actually make enough money to buy some more games? I obviously didn't. And even when I said that, I knew that the auction house was bad for the game. But I think we all know how people think. Hmm. Like... You can, you can just see it. It'll create the engine of productivity that will, um, you know, that will facilitate the virtual work that can allow the, the, the foundations of certain types of games to exist and thrive. Yeah, although you do have to, with Diablo as a specific example, and I think this is kind of a problem that could, you know, be pervasive among games is, and the same happens in MMOs, where, you know, people ascribe real value to in-game things. I just have bots doing it all. Yeah. So you just have, you know, the, the, the games designed and intended for this natural uh, like virtual work to result in NFTs or whatever else. And then people are just like, ah, and we have abused the system. Like yeah. a friend of mine, uh, it was, it, I don't know the guy directly, but a friend of mine was talking about uh, one of his friends who set up a couple of bots at the opening of D3 and made, I think, 20 grand in a couple of weeks. Damn. I was just like, all right, there's 20 grand, completely no effort, no cost. Jobs, jobs are good. Like. Yeah, so just have, you know, one farm of computers working and minting all of the currencies and uh, another click farm uh, operating all of the bots to, <laughs> yeah. to win the shit. Um, so yes, right. To continue then, a lot of people who are pro NFT see this as a fundamental, I guess a fundamental atom of a future virtual economy. 
that really is the future because, you know, it's it's decentralized and it's, you know, all of those things that blockchain just generally has got going for it. For a lot of other people, though, they're going to see this and they're going to think, okay, so this is all just going to be a big lazy cash grab that's going to put a lot more real money in my games. I don't want there to be value in real money in my games. Get away. I don't like you. You feel like a scheme. That's how a lot of people think about NFTs, and you can, I think, see why. Um, now, Dead by Daylight are currently selling a stack of Hellraiser NFTs that are essentially just in-game models. Just, here's a model, here's a background, now it's an NFT. Sorry, it's an NFT collection, because, like with the art scene, they really try to make these feel like a gallery exhibition, and you can go and purchase one of these limited NFTs. You know, there will never be any more. There can only be one NFT for this bit of art. Don't talk about right-clicking. <laughs> right? Clive Barker, the uh, original creator of Hellraiser, recently won back control of the franchise, but he didn't take control till December. So this uh, big old suite of highly unpopular NFTs could be the owners trying to make a last quick buck out of it. But yeah, certainly there was a bit of roasting for that. But okay, that's what Gabe and Team Steam have done. Well, a few weeks ago, Tim Sweeney of Epic Games said that NFTs were, quote, tangled up with an intractable mix of scams. Well, very recently, when Steam took their anti-NFT stand, Sweeney uh, has said that the Epic Games Store will welcome games that make use of blockchain tech, provided they follow the relevant laws, disclose their terms, and are age-related, uh, are age-rated by an appropriate group. Uh, though Epic's not using crypto in our games, we welcome innovation in the areas of technology and finance. As a technology, blockchain, this is the important bit. As a technology, blockchain is just distributed transactional database with a decentralized business model that incentivizes investment in hardware to expand the database's capacity. This has utility whether or not a particular use of it succeeds or fails. Now, this is one of the times where I will say thumbs up tim that is some good clear thinking a lot of people just think that crypto is nft nft is block like they're all the same thing no blockchain is is more just like a technology and a methodology nfts are like a specific implementation use case all of that stuff of that very fundamental thing when you talk about like blockchain smart contracts and all that cool stuff there is so much like genuinely super cool technology and super cool things that are enabled by all of that. I think what's happened though is it's been very much caught up in a speculative market and then in things like NFTs, which have also felt like a speculative market, that a lot of the people who don't really, and I'm not going to profess to understand a lot of it myself, but a lot of people who don't understand like the fundamentals of blockchain technology, they don't actually really understand what the what the thing is. So I would caution against throwing babies out with bathwater. And the thing here is, these are not statements that are against each other. Like, they're not mutually exclusive. Yes, it is true that there's a lot of scams in NFTs. Also, it is true that blockchain is just another technology, and it's one that could be well applied to video games. So, it's an interesting policy position. But Tim saying that, like, will the, the implication of that then be touched? You know, will that touch in fintech? And then... Will Tim have a situation where he's got games in a store that are video games with a fintech angle? Like, what does that mean from a regulatory perspective? Like, all the legal shit, all of the terrible things that could happen on their store, and whatever implications they could have from that? I mean, ballsy. Valve are definitely going in a more conservative uh, manner here. I think they're probably just waiting to see how it all shakes out before they make a firm decision. Whereas, I mean, this just does line up with how Epic generally are in their communications. It's interesting because Valve, you know, you usually assume them to go, ah, yeah, freedom, whatever, like literally do whatever you want in our store. But they've definitely taken a little bit of a, especially recently, something you probably could attribute it to some of the CSGO stuff. You could likely attribute it to maybe just a change in policy across, you know, the developers who've been there for the longest have just changed their minds over time and developed new, uh, like, sort of philosophical outlooks. But especially after Alex's release, Valve certainly feel a bit different. It feels like Steam's policy stuff has been on the board a lot more. And then you look at, well, this this will be a video coming soon on the Steam Deck. And they very much are taking more of a more of a classic approach of, no, we're going to do right by our customers and make sure that happens first. Yeah, and I think that's what people have long wanted. Yeah. You know, they wanted Steam to continue. They've wanted the hardware to succeed. And they've just wanted more games. 
Yeah. So that's I think that is a statement that's serving its its audience. Yeah, and to com- to compare that to Epic, I think it's a case of Epic were always kind of founded on no will will be the curated version of Steam. At least in a way. I'm not sure how much that still uh, is mm-hmm. true. But that's how how they always came across. We're like, no, we'll we're gonna do this. We're gonna do what Steam don't do. Yeah. Give you a load of free stuff and uh most of that for now, but then you know, create a better store. So I guess this is a part of oh no. We'll do we'll do the work that Steam's not willing to do, which is like you said, ballsy. I think. Yeah. So there you go. That's it from the two of them. I'd love to know what you think about all of this. Absolutely, it's a very interesting topic, especially like you know, if you're a blockchain expert and you really know this shit in depth, like you know, what do you think it would open Valve up to? Just thinking about the CS:GO Lotto case, I'd, I'd be fascinated to hear. Yeah. Before we go, I actually have one little thought that is uh, about you know, how this could impact games as NFT, the NFT stuff, but it's a little bit out there. So there's an an artist I've been following for a long time who used to be a Riot uh, concept artist, is called uh, Zero or Zeronis, and he has been selling a lot of NFTs. Does an exceptional job as an artist, but has been making thousands and thousands of dollars in Ethereum from selling on Foundation, to the point where he doesn't work in video games anymore, just mm. is an artist. And I've seen a, I've seen him retweet his friends who are following suit. They're dropping out of games as concept artists because their art is doing better as NFTs. Well, why not ride the wave? Yeah. So. Yeah. So that, that's what that's like. Is it now going to be more valuable being an artist outside of the game side of things when you're doing digital art? Is that going to you know impact games? It's a it's a minor thought, but I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, I think also in a way where. You really need to be at the top of the top of the top. Oh, yeah. Or very yeah, much are. in the crypto scene. Yeah. Uh, and have clout and, like, be known there to get away with, with that. I think there's been a gold rush from a lot of people who, you know, they've tried <laughs> to do that, but it, you know, it just hasn't happened. Hmm. So there you go. Right. Let us know what you think. Uh, that's it for us, and we will see you next time.